hell is that? Drive over. Bad luck driving over the dead. Don't care, drive over. Drop him! Wanna die for the banks? I promise not gonna die for you. I'm a shotgun. Come on. That's it. Afternoon. Watch him, Jake. Any more arms? No. We had it big here, boys. Strong box. Bet it's full of gold coins. No, you saw my face. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no. Cover your ears, ma'am. Daniel. Well, you didn't have to put your Sunday best on to come down here to the Crowbait Saloon to see me. Oh, well, I just came straight from the bank. <laughs> How you been? Yeah, fine, fine. Fine as cream gravy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, uh, how's business? Uh, you know, the mine closing down hadn't helped none. It's getting hard for a man to find work around here. Yeah. You know what? Uh, my brother down in Wichita Falls, he says it ain't much better over there. Yeah, well, what can I do for you? <sighs> okay, now, well, uh, I want you to know that I'm I'm not here today as a penny pension banker. I'm, I'm here as your friend, Nate. What is it? Well, you're three months behind on your home mortgage. And now, before you say anything, it's nothing more than a minor fuss right now. But, uh... Catch up soon. Uh, Laura Lee, she's been sick. I'm sorry to hear. I'm sure they miss her down at the schoolhouse. Yeah. Well, you know, if it was up to me. Uh, uh, but it's not up to you, Hank, and I understand that. Uh, well, anyway, uh, Jensen's going to give you till August, and if you're not caught up by then, he's going to put a lien on the ranch. Mm. 
try to get him to give you more time, but uh, it's all right. He is. I, I do. I do. Thank you for coming by. Sorry. That's okay. Hank Holiday, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Laura, thanks for asking. Well, I, I should be off. So. Are we gonna see you for dinner soon? Well, you bet. You bet. So you feel better. Thank you. Okay. Nate. Take care. How's your day? Fine. I know that look. What's wrong? Nothing. Don't lie to me, Nathaniel Reed. Something's wrong. It's written all over your face. Hank says we have till August to get caught up. We're behind? How much? Three months. Four next week. Why didn't you tell me? Because we were talking about having little ones. And now I can just barely provide for the two of us. And a man doesn't want his wife to think. Anyway, things will get better. They will. I know, but you still should have told me. I'm sorry. I'll be back working at the school soon enough. Hmm. We'll get through this together. Yeah. We've been down to the blanket before and we're still here. <laughs> the reeds don't get up their fiddle that easily, right? No, ma'am. Mama's coming over in the morning. Mm. Going to church together. Laura Lee, <sighs> I'm not going to church with you, Mama, okay? I... <clears throat> Hey, 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 hey. No, I'm fine. I'm just a little, just a little dizzy get, is all. I'm gonna go get Doc. No, there's no need. Well, then let me take you. No, I'll, I'll take myself. You got work that needs doing. I'm fine. You got a lot of folks coming in through here. What are you get in your here? Your wife? What are you? Get in here. How'd you find me? Jake Bree loves dead. I lit out yesterday from Cody. Well, he can't prove it, but where it is, it was the marshal. What'd Jake do? It was marshal. He didn't have no warrant or nothing. His bartender, he told me to look for Nathaniel Reed's gang. What for? He didn't say what for, but. He sure as hell after us. Look, after you left, my things didn't turn out. Things went bad. But a couple of instances went raw. Sid nearly got himself killed, and well, I ain't had a good score since Santa Fe. Is that how Jake got killed, robbing banks? No. He got himself a job as a bartender. It's been near a year now. Quiet as a dead mouse. Why well, kill him now? Don't make no sense. Well, he uh, changed his identity like me. The marshal were taking a while to track him down. But... Well, they found Jake, and they, they found him in a way that I'd rather not tell you, truth be told. Just tell me. They cut him. He was cut up. He was cut up like someone that was, that was asking questions and he wasn't getting the answers they wanted. He knew where I was staying, and he knows where you're staying. As soon as I got the word, I rode like hell to get here. You understand what I'm saying? There's a man coming, and he aims to bury you. I have a wife, a business. People respect me here. You can't be here, Frank. Well, you don't believe me? I believe you. Well, then come on. I ain't running. I rode my horse on the ground for you. Just let me spend the night here. You can stay the night, but you stay in here. Don't tell me you didn't live more than 10 minutes with us than you have the whole time since. I'll bring you some supper over later. Still got your guns? Yeah, you got them. When you leave here in the morning, don't come back.
So, nausea, vomiting, particularly in the morning, fatigue. How long have you had these symptoms? A week, maybe 10 days. Well, my medical opinion tells me that uh, congratulations are in order, Mrs. Reed. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, morning sickness, fatigue. I think you ought to entertain the notion that you're with child. <laughs> are you sure? Well, time will tell us for certain. In the meantime, if you feel nauseous, you take a drop of that. All right. Spearmint tea works as well. Nate's gonna just about pass out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll be fine. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this food on our plates and this roof over our heads and all the blessings you've given us, large and small. Amen. Nate. What? Amen. You hurt your back again? No. One of the horses sick? Nope. Is it about money? Not exactly. What if I did get pregnant? What would happen? I want that. You know I do. We're just not ready. Laura, I have something I need to tell you. So do I. Nathaniel Reed! He's here! Don't shoot! No, 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 Laura. I know. No. No. Daniel Reed! I need you to step out of your residence now with your hands in the air. Don't make us wait too long either. I think you're plotting something. We'll have to take some shots in self defense. You did something again. Is that why he's here? No, I swear. I swear I didn't. No, I'm no. coming with you. No, sweetheart. Go upstairs. No, you, you can't I'm go. I'm coming with you. Can't you. Go with I'm me. not leaving do you. Do what I'm telling you to do. Go upstairs and don't come down till you hear my voice. Go. He will hang you, you understand? Or worse. Get on your horse and ride. I'm not going to let anything happen to Laura. Go. I hope so. I ain't armed. You see that? Yeah, we see that. You gonna put down your iron? Not sure. I was really looking forward to shooting you. She really was. I need you to acknowledge that I ain't healed. We acknowledge it. We ain't blind. Look, I don't know what call you think you got being here. 
I know you. And I'll never forget you. See this badge? Dangerous line of work, marshalling. Most men won't even think about it, but I ain't like most men. You shot my eye out, that makes you guilty. The doctor said it was a miracle. You know, inch out of the side, goes right into my brain. He said I was the luckiest guy he ever met. These past three years looking for you, I figure you're the luckiest son of a bitch I ever met. Finish him? No, no, we get more if we bring him in alive. Come on. We'll go around back. Yeah. Judging from those bullets out front. I'd say you're harboring Frank Bell. He's wanted for murdering of a marshal in Carson City. Never killed a man, didn't have it coming. We all got it coming, don't we, Frank? about a half dozen out there. I hear them. What are we gonna do? Huh? I saw them shooting upstairs. <laughs> Laura Lee's up there. I gotta get to her, see if she's okay. Never gonna make it up there. Well, well I'm going. But they will kill you. Then they'll just have to kill me. Nate, she's dead. What? I'm afraid to tell you, he killed her. What are you talking about? I saw her. Uh, I saw her. Shot her in the head, Nate. No, no. Laura Lee, she's gone. I don't believe Except you. Except No, no. I'm going upstairs. We just killed two U.S. Marshals, right? We? I ain't leaving without her. Go! We gotta go! I'm not leaving without go. expect to be John with you all night, but me and Sid heard of some easy pickings out west. Jackson Hole, maybe. Yeah. You're welcome to join us. But it's up to you. She was a school teacher, Frank. Taught Luke. 
you who never. Only wrong moves she ever made was marrying me. She know about you. you know, who you were. Yeah. And she stayed with me anyway. I'm truly sorry. I thought maybe things would come back around someday, but figured I'd be the one doing it and dying. All right. Take care of that thing. We gotta get that up. Give me the knife. See her, right? <sighs> Where'd you go? I just checked on Laura Lee. And? She's gone. Ranch hand confirmed it. Laid her down in front of the house. Now I'm sorry, Nate. Sorry, Nate. Frank Bell, you just about met your maker. Near hell did you, trigger happy son of a bitch. Nathaniel Reed. You ain't gone shy, have you? See you, Dalton. Evening. Glad to see you're above the snakes, Nate. You as well, Sid. Well, it's gonna take a lot more than dying to kill Sid Dalton. <laughs> hey, got something special here. Think you're gonna like. That's cider whiskey. Ugh. They call it Applejack. It conceived, created, and consumed here in Texas. <laughs> <sighs> you been in that little town this whole time? I uh, am. Did you get tired of baling hay and toting feed? That fellow with one eye. And they shot Marshall. I want to kill Jakey. Killed Nate's wife, too, back there. That's the worst thing I ever heard. Frank says you might be wanting to go back to work. Was U.S. Marshal after his Sid. He's a bad hombre, and he aims to kill us. We could turn butter in an orphanage till he showed up, and it wouldn't matter. He's gonna kill us anyway, so might as well work, make some money, so we can pay the devil. Fair enough. It'll be all right, Nate. You're amongst friends now, Nate. Sorry about your wife. Okay, so what are we gonna start with? Trains? You think of Pacific Union? It's always been good. Dangerous. Yeah. No trains. No trains. No trains, no railroads. What then? Ladies' handbags? I say we go back to doing what we know. Stagecoaches. 
never know how many guards are gonna be on the train. It could be a dozen. Stagecoach one, maybe two. And I think we can hit four stagecoaches in the time it takes us to hit one train. A lot less chance of getting a load of buckshot in your ass, too. Well, fair enough, you can miss me. And no killing. No killing, Frank Bale. I'll try. <laughs> Beans is ready. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> These two fellas to your left are a lot more nervous than I am, so no sudden movements, you hear me? Frank, keep an eye on them while I look in the coach. Look who's barking orders now. Hey, I captain this ship. You got a problem with that, I'll be on my way. Problem? No problem. You do what I say. Oh, man. No, Sid. Sid. No. Close your eyes and count to a hundred. Really close your eyes. I'll close them for you. A hundred. A hundred. That's good. Keep counting. Coaches instead of trains. Here's to Nathaniel Reed. Nathaniel Reed is dead. Well, what were we supposed to call you then? I say, 
Call him Applejack. Hmm. Texas Jack. Who now? Hmm? Here's to Texas Jack. Texas Jack. Hmm. Texas Jack, all right. <laughs> How's the flow? There's some particularly fine-looking woman up there in St. Augustine. Like you'd know. I do know. See? She was a fine looking woman. Get them horses saddled, Frank. Yes, sir. You want in town to stock up? Hey, no more beans. I've been thinking. No, Frank, I don't. I've been thinking the Stanley Reed's getting a little too big for his britches. Why'd you say that? Well, we're the ones down here doing all the work, and he's up there on his horse barking orders. Well, because of Reed, you know, we got whiskey, money. I don't mind taking orders from him. Yeah. He's not as smart as he thinks he is. What do you know about smart? Mm. I know a thing. A thing or two. <laughs> two might be pushing it. God. Apple cider whiskey. Why don't you have a little coffee there? <laughs> Coming hard. Coming hard? Yeah. I don't feel like chasing a stagecoach today, do you? No, sir, I do not. We're gonna try something different. Well, you get in mind. Good? I don't like it. I don't like anything. You want to tell us why you're blocking our path, mister? Just on my way to a funeral, friend. My, my brother got killed, and I got awful drunk when I heard about it last night. And I got in a poker game, and I lost my horse and my guns, lost my coat. I'm sorry to hear your troubles, but you ain't answered my question, did you? Well, I've Open, maybe I can catch a ride with you fellas. Well, sorry, I can't do that. Comedy policy, no, no passengers. I'm not gonna argue with you about that, but could I ask you 
Maybe you got a blanket or something. Help the fella out a little. You said you're going bury your brother? That's right. How did he die? Well, sir, he was defending a lady's honor, so they say. That's the least we can do. Awful kind of you. Appreciate that. You may stow some extra blankets in the boot. Have a look, see. Give them what we got. Awful kind of you. Don't mention it. Appreciate it. Y'all seem to be in an awful big hurry. Catch him, how comes it? Hey, I'm gonna have to ask you to put the scatter gun down. I do what he says. Last fella, he got shot in the eye. Hand it over. That's a good boy. You got him? Yep. What's your name, friend? Ben Weathersby. Listen, Ben. There's a safe in that coach, and I need you to give me the combination to it. Well, there is. Oh, yeah, there is. I know there is. What's the combination to it? Well, you think they're going to give me the combination? My partner back here has a pistol pointed at Mr. Ketchum's head. That son of a bitch has an itchy trigger finger. Drop it! What the hell? Jesus Christ. Just take it easy. Everything's easy, whether it be. What the hell, Frank? He pulled on me, didn't leave me a choice. I'm not sure where it came from. Go around front and get the combination and open the safe. Go, son of a bitch. What you doing, Frank? How'd this happen? Frank said he pulled a derringer. Everybody thinks they're Doc Holliday. Frank's gonna get us home. Yeah, we don't need this. Ah! Come on. I said no killing. Goddamn witness. You might not know, but we don't answer to you, all right? You want to declare yourself the king? Do not. I need a better man down, goddammit. A better man down. Did you get the combination? Yeah. Well, what's the combination? Six, 23, 60. Why? In case you forget it. How the hell am I going to forget it? <laughs> a bitch. God. It's gonna leave a mark. Collared Ansel Pickett yesterday. Just delivered. Dead or alive? First way. Well, a dead outlaw is an outlaw who cannot burden my courtroom. Yeah. What are your plans for the future? Don't have any. Grab that wanted poster on the desk there. I could use some of your grit. There's something I've been chewing on. Yeah, what? You heard of this fellow they call Texas Jack? I have. And what do you think? It's not my business to think about outlaws. 
humor me. Well, he robs stage coaches, a lot of them, and he drinks this horse piss liquor called Applejack. Can't stand the stuff myself. Word is he's in the area. Uh huh. I'd like you to check around. I want you to bring him to me, alive. Alive. He ain't killed nobody yet, has he? Not as far as we know. Good. Word has that he used to run with a few local men I'd like to see hang. I'm hoping he might be amenable to helping me ferret them out and take them down. You don't think taking up with an outlaw might be bad for business? I'm talking to you, aren't I? We all have certain events in our past we might like to forget, don't we, Marshal? Now, Texas Jack, he's made a point of bloodless thievery. As long as he doesn't kill anyone, it'll be all right. The public will forgive almost anything outside of murder. OK, well, guess you got your man, Judge. Oh, come now, Marshal. I don't think there was any question that that was the case. Marshal? What? Alive. I heard you the first time. Six in a row, you dirty little partaker. The Lord has blessed me on this cold evening. The Lord has blessed you with a horseshoe up your ass. What do you got there? Beg pardon. Uh, no bartender. He has taken a recess for the evening. I believe he's ill, though he'd never admit to it. So who's a man to talk to if they need a drink? You leave your money on the bar. <clears throat> Five card draw is the game. If such pastimes pose any allure to you. I find it to be a delightful supplement to my liquor. My name's Bart, and if I may, it is a pleasure. Your presence here is a marked improvement over the company, ma'am. You just got a compliment. That's Bonnie. I'm Woody, you're Bart. Who are you? I'm gonna call you Susie. We're just gonna take this bottle, you don't mind, Susie? to me. We met before? No. I think I'd remember you on account of the eye, no offense. No offense taken. You know, I can see a lot better though my head off goes. I'm sure you don't mind. I um, didn't always have this patch. But I had a fine looking lady when I lost my eye. She was beautiful. Had the ring and everything, you know. I used all my savings, picked it out of a catalog myself. It, it was a weird ring, really. It would had a snake eating its own tail. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I mean, but she loved it, you know. She loved that kind of stuff. She was a fiery redhead, you know. She's beautiful. She had this hair all the way down her back, and it was like a crimson sunset on Christmas Eve. But after I got this right here, she said I changed. She did. She said that I had a temper. I got angry all the time. It's hard to be around me. And well, I ha heck, I couldn't blame her none. I mean, I didn't even want to be around myself. And the doctor who fixed me up, he said I was lucky. That it was a miracle. 
Right, Bonnie? Mm -hmm. It was a miracle that I was even alive. But that miracle didn't help my relationship none. No siree. My beauty left me for the doctor. It's a miracle maker, doctor. Used to redheads. Hmm. I think I'm gonna take your money now, deal me in. You still seem angry. I am, Bart. It's very observant of you. I mean, I, I can't even look at a doctor still without my blood beginning to boil. You know, Susie, I'm still looking for the fellow that shot out my eye. And in my quest, I've left a lot of people in the dust, including my angel. Here's to her. Mm. I'm trying to figure this out. Susie, have you been to Santa Fe? I've been through a couple times. Don't make out to New Mexico too often. All right, gentlemen, three in. You know, I I've been there once, and I worked there, too. Give me two. Ah. To you, pal. Dealer takes two. So, so, the once or twice you passed through, what were you doing in Santa Fe exactly? Sir, are you gonna ask a thousand questions or are we gonna play some poker? Bob. <laughs> Hands on the table. Table. On the table. On the table. Don't move them. She'll unload her peacemaker on you. I know she will. You understand? I understand you just kill a man in cold blood for no reason. Uh, being a marshal, I've got a legal warrant to shoot Bart Benton. Frank Bell! Frank Bell! You're the one. I, I just, I couldn't remember so well the face, you know? Like Nate Reed, Jake Breedlove. I didn't forget those two faces, no way. You're the one that killed Jake? I am, Frank. I did, and I am, and he had it coming. This is your unlucky night playing cards with him, huh? And I, I'll bet you, let me look, let me look. It's full house. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're one unlucky son of a gun, huh? You gonna kill me now, too? I'm afraid so. Nathaniel Reed. Nathaniel Reed. Keep talking. You know where he's at? Yeah. He goes by the name Texas Jack. Wait. Nate Reed is Texas Jack. Yeah, that's your man. He's acting like a, a big shot outlaw now. Ain't the same Nathaniel Reed that I knew. Well? Do you know where Texas Jack is? I do. Well. Well, I'd have to take you there. We'll lead the way. Well, what's, what's in it for me? What's in it for you is you don't get your privates blown off by the end of Bonnie's gun. What are you going to do with Nathaniel Reed? Hmm? Well, what I'd like to do to him is I would let Bonnie cut out his eye, and then I would bury him alive in a pine box. But unfortunately, I've got a mandate from a judge that says I need to bring in Texas Jack alive. Yeah, why alive? Because he ain't killed no one yet, at least not in public view. 
What if I had a way for you to kill him and not get the judge pissed? I'm listening. What if Texas Jack was a murderer as opposed to just being a thief? This way you'd be justified in killing him uh, in public and being in self-defense and all. OK, keep going. I can make Nathaniel Reed the most wanted fugitive in four states. $5,000 reward, dead or alive. Well, you can have your eye from Texas. Hell, you can have both eyes. Return them to the judge, however you see fit. We get our reward. And, and I would just ask you a mere 20% in, in my life, of course. Go on. <laughs> And two stage robberies. I'll do the killing at the first one. The second one, you catch me in the act, there'd be no questions. Yeah, you know, pretty quick at turning your back on your friend. No. Daniel Reed's my friend. Texas Jack ain't no friend of mine. You know what? Okay. But if you double cross me, I will. I will. Finish. So, don't let that happen. This plan, when? Let's make it two weeks time. We'll make sure there's bodies so the murders can be blamed on Texas Jack. Hey! Uh, Mr. Ketchum! Hey! Backstabbing, two bit, pony face, <laughs> skulldollarish fella, Susie. And I appreciate them attributes. Now you get like a dog, and we're gonna be following. Don't even think about it. Get. Let's go. We're following. Apple pie. You know, we were talking about taking the stage where they have to slow down and cross Miller's Creek. But that's where they expect us to do it. I don't think we should do it there. I think we should go back up the road a couple miles, take them there. Fair enough. Where the hell's Frank? Who the hell knows? We'll just do this one without him. Yeah, well, he was bringing the ammo. We may have to go get some. Fair enough. Where do I meet you? Meet me at Miller's Creek Crossing. Huh. <sighs> OK. What's your name? Laura Lee. Why? Uh, sorry, I thought you were someone else. Have a good day. You too. Come on. Any sign of Frank? Not a hair. Well, so we gonna wait for him or what? No. Like I said, let's do this one without him. Maybe nobody get killed. So, you used to live around here, right? Yeah. Shouldn't have come back. 
You know, there's something I gotta tell you. I have to wait. They're coming. Let's go. Come on. Taking that scatter gun. That is good. Give me that pistole. Thank you. Hey, ain't nothing here. Where is it? Where's what, mister? What's your name? Clint Harrison. Clint, I used to drive for Express Company myself way back in the day. How long you been doing it? Nine years. Hmm. Well, I got stopped one night. A bunch of fellas gonna try to separate me from my gold cargo and me being young and dumb. Pulled my iron. Ended up wearing a bullet. If you pull that pistol, I'm gonna draw on you and I'm faster than you are. I promise you, easy. It don't Let's work. Take the feller's pistol. Thank you. Now, where is it? It's not here. Put your pistol under his chin. If you ain't carrying nothing, why are you so squirrely? Hey, what you saying? Hey, God ain't here today, friend. We ain't the real hands. We were hired to ride here. Who hired you? U.S. Marshal Calhoun. Now, you got the bulge on us by a couple miles. You got a handful of minutes before he gets here. Friendly piece of advice, Clint. I think you ought to find another line of work. You don't seem to have the stomach to work for a murdering son of a bitch like Woody Calhoun. I never go to the marshal myself. I'm just working to keep bread on the table. Well, where's the real shipment? The marshal just hired me to ride. He didn't job out the truth or nothing. That there is the fourth Reich. Texas Jack, I'm a United States Marshal. Unless you want me to keep firing on you, drop your gun. Raise your arms in the air now. Ugh. Throw those guns on the ground. What are you doing? Oh, that's not a nick. No, it's, it's all right. Listen, listen, what I was trying to tell you before, not now, Sid. I seen your wife. Not now. When I went into town to get the ammo, I saw your wife. She's dead. She ain't dead. She's alive. She's dead, you, Sid. I'm telling you, I asked her her name, Laura Lee. Drop those guns. Is that her? It is, isn't it? I don't know what Frank was saying, but she's alive. I see her. OK, so you're going to get on my horse, and you're going to ride out of here. You hear me? <laughs> Okay? All right. Okay, when I count three, All right. you get on that horse and you ride. You hear me? One, two. Go! Come on! Come on! Come on, Calhoun! What do you got to think, Calhoun? You got nothing, Calhoun! Come on! Come on! Don't Come tell on! Him. You got nothing! You got nothing! You got nothing, Calhoun!
Nate? Laura. Or should I call you Jack? Laura. Frank Bell told me you were dead. He told me he saw you get shot in the head. He told me that he saw him carry you out and lay you on the porch. Well, I ain't dead yet. And Sid told me you were alive, and I remember getting on the horse. I had, had to get to you, but I, I remember getting here. How'd I get here? Bank holiday. Found you hanging off a horse outside of town. Brought you in. What are we doing in this house? Didn't know where else to take you, so the doc helped me carry you over. We lost you there for a moment. Doc. Oh. Doc, I can't come out here for a while. So you're gonna have to stop by the office every day. Pick up some clean bandages and that ointment. And you get some rest. Thank you, Doc. Thanks for all your help. I'll see you. What happened with the bank in the house? Somebody bought the house, lived in it for a while, and disappeared. It's been empty ever since. I brought her old blanket. Tried to make it look like it did. So we're breaking the law, we're trespassing. Well, you're the expert in law breaking. Or if I'd known you were still alive, I never would have put my guns back on. Are you sure about that? Come in. Judge. Marshal. You know why I'm here? I can't say that I do. Marshal Calhoun and that bounty hunter have been leaving a trail of unwarranted bodies behind them. Now, word has it that Calhoun is your man. I'm certain Marshal Calhoun is acting in accordance with every law. Mm -hmm. Well, the governor isn't as certain, I'm afraid. That's a federal arrest order. Hmm. I need you to tell me where I can find Marshal Calhoun. This is pretty much the longest beating I've ever been privy to. I know. <laughs> Sad. She's just gonna keep beating and beating and beating on you. And trust me, it's hurting me more than it is you until you finally, eventually tell us where Texas Jack is. I told you, I don't know where he rode off to. <sighs> what we gonna do, Bon? I just picked this up in Dawson. Dying to give it a try. She's dying to give it a try. See it? Okay. Okay. Oh, well. This is Nathaniel Jr. Who is he, Mama? Hey, little man. <clears throat> Nathan, sweetheart, this is your daddy. He'll take some time. For him or for you? For both of us.
Where are my guns? I put them in livery. Just keep them away from Nathan Jr. I'm sorry. That's fine. Go find somewhere to hide. Are you okay? Yes. All right. Go. Looks like no one's been here in a long time. Let's go. Nothing here. Sorry, I just... First thing you need to know is I hate doctors, so don't piss me off. Tell me out. What happened to him? Take him. Good Lord. Hey, I just said no, no. Let's have a look at you. Oh, boy. Keep him alive. Set us up. No, You're a traitor. That was a misunderstanding. Sid. Shut up. He set us up. I'm sorry. It wasn't supposed to end up like this, Sid. Stop talking. Now you look at me. Texas Jack. He might have a gut shot. He might be alive. He might be dead. We don't know. But I need to find him either way. Yeah, what are you gonna do with him? That's a good question, Frank. <laughs> Bonnie and me, we rode out to his former residence, wasn't there. Bank manager says it's empty. You gotta help me out. I don't know where he is. I, I, I knew I, I, I'd have told you. I just don't hurt, just don't hurt Sid. So. You know what, Frank? What? I believe you, Bon. <laughs> Uh. It's a bad dream. 
took it off? Yeah, it was soaked. So. You need to eat something? Oh. You haven't had more than water in three days? You need to sleep, too. I can't sleep. Not knowing what I've done to you. You saved my life. You know that. I have no hand in who lives and who dies. All those years I was drinking, robbing, bleeding. My life was just draining out of my body. And all I could think about was you. Because I think you're the only good thing I ever did. You're the only time that I got anything right. You got a second chance now, Nate. It's up to you what to do with it. I can't say that I'm happy with what you spent your time doing, but we're together here and now with Nathan Jr. It's a second chance for us, too. Careful, sweetheart. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I'm gonna go visit the doc and get a change of dressing. No, I'll stay a little while. I'll be right back. I love you. I love you. I love you. Come over here, son. Let's talk. Oh, no, 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 no. go around. So, Marshall, is it? Yeah. He's a bad man here, but good doctors work and I was performing miracles. Don't I always say that, Bonnie? He does say that, yeah. You get the men who did this? The men? Oh, yes, sir, they was real nasty fellas. I figured that you must be the guy that people come to see for medical supplies and tonics, that sort of thing. It's a small town, Marsh. Are you married? Widower. My wife passed away last year. That's sad. How long did it take you before you started bedding other women? Excuse me? I'm not mumbling. Can you not hear me? How long did it take you before you started bedding other women? Oh, I... I love my wife. So did I. You know, the doctor who put this patch on me here, he, uh, he was a tad more handsome than you. But he, he was always flirting with my wife taking advantage of his station. And one day, he got her alone in his office, and she was all vulnerable. Now, now I, I get it. I do. You know, we want to listen to and trust everything a doctor has to say, but it must be hard for you not to take advantage of a situation like that, huh, Doc? Excuse me, what are you? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. You're gonna tell me right now who's been coming for medical supplies to fix a gunshot wound, and I'll try and forget your profession. Uh, yeah. I. Yeah. Dr. Forrester. Dr. Forrester. I've come for the bandages for now.
loot. It's a miracle, Bonnie. It's hallelujah. <laughs> Look who just showed up. You know, my shoulder still hurts when it rains from your gunshot. You can't arrest me. Judge said it was accidental. Well, I'm not sore with you. I never was. You come here to kill my husband? Oh, he's a bad apple, that one. He's a good man. Oh, you think you truly know him, do you? I do. Oh. Okay, well, he gave me this. Your good man. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to kill him. I'm here to find Texas Jack. Now, you know that's his new name. Your, your good man who's done so much thieving and, 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 and stealing and murdering. He's still my husband. Yeah, he is. Well, your husband is going to stand trial for his crimes. Like he stood trial at our home that day? I don't know where he is. Let's go sit down. Come on. Let me get that for you. Sit down, right there. And you get comfortable. Because Bonnie and me, we're not going anywhere. And neither are you, Laura Lee. Calhoun sent me. He told me to tell you he's got Laura Lee. Where? Well, he's planning on killing you, Nate. Do me a favor, Hank. Yeah. Ask Mrs. Holiday to come over here and watch Nate Jr. Yeah, sure thing. Okay. And, um,. You'd stay over here too, Hank. Well, but Nate, you know, she never stopped loving you. I mean, no other man or, you know, not that you'd think, uh, you know, and she had plenty of suitors. I'm sure she did. Thank you. Shot a squirrel with it once. When? Uh, uh, 16. Well, I guess a man's got to aim some to hit a squirrel. Maybe I just got lucky. <laughs> yeah. Say, uh, Nate, where do you think they're gonna? Go home, man. This ain't your fight. Sid and Laura Lee, go. Drop your gun. The other one. Slow. Good. Good. Ah! No! Ah! I want you to see this live. 
Drop the gun. Turn around real slow. Drop the knife. You know, I think I can still see some of your blood on this knife. You wouldn't shoot a lady, would you? Drop the knife. Calhoun! Now how do I know if I'm talking to Nate Reed or Texas Jack? I'll come out unarmed. I don't think I believe you, Jack. You want to kill me? That's fine. I got it coming. But you let her go. You got to come out first. Let her go first. No, nope. not gonna. You come out first, I'll let her go, I promise. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Let me see those hands. See? It's you and me now. So Woody Calhoun. Yes, sir. Arrest him. Marshal Calhoun, your days of killing folks as you please are over. Got one more for ya. Get on up there. I'm the bank manager. 
man of undisputed moral fortitude, and I can assure you, claims against these two are accurate. So can I. I timed it perfectly. Now, I just got a new job. Do you have anything to do with that? I may have. What am I supposed to do with this? Put it on. Why don't you join us for Sunday dinner, Sid? Well, thank you. Yeah. Let's go. Now, remind me to tell you how your daddy got his nickname. No, Sid. <laughs> okay. Maybe we're a little over. 